Hello, welcome to Reso Coder. In this tutorial, you are going to learn everything important about grid layout, which is a really efficient way to position views in a grid-like fashion. You can do almost everything with just a linear layout and a fair bit of patience, but why on earth would you even consider that option when you can choose to use the elegant grid layout for all of your grid needs instead? If you've been following this tutorial series, you may remember our three trusty text views. In this video, we are gonna make a whopping change. Believe it or not, we will add a fourth text view. Now, let's take a look at the most basic implementation of grid layout with four text views inside it. It's right here and it's nothing complicated. We have a root element of type grid layout and inside it there are four text views. The grid layout's width and height is set to match parent because we want it to fill the screen. And the text views have just a nice color and I've also set their text size and text content. But as you might have noticed, there is no layout width and layout height specified for the children of grid layout. That's because all of its children, these text views, are automatically assigned a width and height with a value of wrap content. This means that as far as grid layout is concerned, these four text views look like this. They have layout width and layout height implicitly set to wrap content. Let's check out the designer. Huh, where's the grid? At the moment, this grid layout looks like a plain old linear layout. The problem is that we haven't specified the number of rows and columns yet. Let's do it now. We wanna go back to the source code. And for the grid layout, we want to set Android column count to be equal to 2 and we want to do the same thing with row count. So the code should look something like this. And now when we go back to the designer, now we can see that it starts to represent a grid. We can also change the orientation, which is implicitly horizontal. We can change it to be vertical in the XML. So Android orientation and we want to set it to vertical now. And what this does is that instead of first and second text view like this, so first and on the right there was the second text view, now there is the first text view and then the second one is below the first one. But let's revert that change because we want this grid layout to be horizontal. So we can just delete this line of code. But doesn't our grid layout look a bit dull? You know, it's just sitting there crammed in the corner Let's make it take up the whole screen. We can do this by adding weights to the views inside it. If you've seen my linear layout tutorial, you know something about weights. And if you haven't seen it yet, I really recommend you to check it out. This time, we need to specify both column weight and row weight. Views with equal weight will occupy the same amount of screen real estate, and we want just that. So let's set our views up. On the top here, we want to add Android layout column weight and this is going to be equal to one and also android layout row weight and this will also be one now we can just copy this and paste it inside each text view if you have these kind of formatting issues the nice thing about checking out the designer is that when you go to the designer and come back to the source code it's all gonna be nice and tidy again but let's stay in the designer for a while. As you can see, the views are taking up the same amount of screen and collectively they take up the whole screen, which is completely awesome. Right now, we have two rows and two columns, which accommodate four views. This means that everything fits perfectly. However, we can make the first view occupy two columns and the third view to take up two rows. So let's get back to the XML. In order to be able to accomplish what I have just said, our grid layout needs to be comprised of six squares, more precisely three rows and two columns. So the row count will now be three instead of two. We want the first view to occupy two columns. That's the perfect use case for layout column span attribute. So we want to write Android layout column span and this will be equal to two. And as for the third view, this one should occupy two rows. This requires the use of row span. So we want to add Android, layout, row span, and this is also going to be equal to two. Looks good, doesn't it? But if our app targets pre-Lollipop devices, which means KitKat or lower, 
these row weights and column weights won't work. We can demonstrate this by running this app on an KitKat emulator, more precisely on the API level 19. So when we run this, you can see that this is definitely KitKat because it doesn't have material design and the contents of the grid layout are definitely not taking up the whole screen. There's a simple fix though. We can download a support library. We wanna right click on references, manage NuGet packages and we will search for Android support grid layout. And as you can see it's right over here and we just wanna click on install and now we have support grid layout alongside with app compat libraries and all of that good stuff. Now we can go back to the XML and change this grid layout to android.support.v7.widget.gridlayout. We also want to have the same thing in the closing tag, so just copy it and paste it down here. We also want to add a new namespace. It doesn't matter how it's called, but I and many other developers like to call it app. So we want to go right here and below we want to write XML and S colon app and this is going to be equal to HTTP colon slash slash schemas Android APK RS auto just like this. We need to specify this because this grid layout is not part of the Android system. It's rather a library which is located inside our app. So whenever we need to do something with this grid layout, we cannot take the grid layout which is from the Android OS. Because as we've seen before, the grid layout on KitKat which is API 19 and below doesn't support some of the new features. But when we specify that we want to work with the attributes from the app namespace, everything is gonna work because we will be working with the support widget grid layout. Now we want to change every grid layout specific attribute to be from the namespace called app instead of Android. So all of these column count, row count, column weight, row weight, column span, we want to change everything to be from the app namespace. And now when we try to run it on Nexus 19 emulator again, which is Android KitKat, it's gonna look just as we want it to look, which is totally cool. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you wanna get the code from this video, go to the link in the video description, which is gonna take you to resocoder.com. If this video helped you, give it a like and also share it. Subscribe to this channel because there are many more Xamarin Android tutorials coming and to make sure you get notified about all of my new tutorials, hit the bell button as well. If you have anything to say or suggest, go ahead and leave a comment, follow me on social media and see you in the next video.